So I've used the time machine to travel back in time a few weeks, back to when, you know, Dalgana coffee was still all over the internet and people cared about it, since I'm late to the party. Eh. I've got this delicious and boozy version of it that I wanted to make for you, and also this very weird work in progress whole bean version that I'm kind of kicking around and I want to share it with you and see what you guys can do with it. So let's 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 do, do the show thing. Let's do the show. <laughs> So, in case you missed it, what is Delgada coffee? It's this kind of whipped reverse latte thing. You make it with instant coffee, typically. I do have a version that uses fresh coffee that I'm gonna show you guys later on in the episode if you stick around for that. Delgada coffee can be very pretty when it's made correct and very delicious. It's like a sweetened coffee treat. Sort of reminds me of Thai iced coffee in flavor, if you've ever had that. There's a pretty interesting history to it, actually, but honestly, James Hoffman covered that super well already, and he's got a great channel that I love and that I think you should check out. So I'm just gonna include a link to his video here rather than rehash what he's already said about Dalgana coffee. Also, if you're looking for the non-alcoholic version of it, the standard version of Dalgana coffee, look no further. James Hoffman has you covered. The only thing I wanted to talk about about Dalgana coffee before I get into making this cocktail is answering the question of what is instant coffee, because honestly, I didn't know what instant coffee was. All I knew was that instant coffee is bad, but I had no idea how it was made. Well, it turns out it's it's kind of interesting actually, and, and maybe totally different and valid way to prepare and enjoy coffee. I don't know. At least as far as I could find, what it isn't is imitation coffee, though I suppose that might be true in the case of some manufacturers. Basically, the way that co instant coffee is traditionally made is by first brewing coffee and then taking that coffee and spraying it as a very fine aerosol into a heated dehydration chamber where it dries in the air and into flakes and grains that precipitate out and are collected and rehydrated later when you make your instant coffee. I don't have all the exact specifics on this, and I know there's probably a few different manufacturing processes involved. Uh, I just wanted to say that learning that kind of thing changed my whole perspective on this stuff. So on to my Dalgana coffee. Dalgana coffee is typically made by taking a little bit of water and a little bit of sugar and a little bit of instant coffee, and you whip it with a whisk into like this very thick foam and then floating that across the top of a cold glass of milk, frequently on ice. Uh, you know, like so a latte is coffee on the bottom and milk on top. This is milk on the bottom, coffee on top. That milk on the bottom of the glass, I think we can jazz that up for a cocktail by replacing it with a combination of horchata and rum. Yes, you could use rum chata if you wanted to buy rum chata. I opted to make my own horchata and instead use the rum of my choice, which actually today is going to be Plantation Three Stars. In case you're not familiar with horchata, that, by the way, is a sweetened and spiced traditional rice milk that is popular in Mexico, uh, though you're actually gonna find versions of it all around the world. I made mine uh, right here by putting some plain white long grain rice, sugar, cinnamon sticks, hazelnuts. Uh, typically it calls for almonds, but I figured why not? And uh, some vanilla extract into a blender with some water. And I blended it up uh, until it was a mess. And then I let it sit overnight and I strained everything out. And it's easy and delicious and, and delicious, by the way, delicious, delicious. So for the floater of coffee foam that goes on top of the Dalgana coffee, I'm gonna use a whipped mixture of Mr. Black coffee liqueur and a bit of sugar and some instant coffee. We're gonna have to make that foam first. So I've got a bowl and a whisk and a tablespoon. Uh, we're gonna need two tablespoons of white sugar. These long-handled measure, long measuring spoons are one of the things that Barfly Mixology Gear makes that I like quite a bit. Uh, and then I will need two tablespoons, the same, of instant coffee. Oh boy. Two tablespoons of instant coffee using Elite Instant 100% coffee. I don't know much about instant coffee. This is the one that I bought. And now I need two tablespoons of my coffee liqueur. I'm using Mr. Black. Um, I like Mr. Black a ton. And in this, it, mostly because it's pretty unsweetened. I think that if you were using a sweetened, uh, like a Kahlua, you'd have to use less sugar here. And if you did that, I'd be worried about your ratios of like dried liquid things and if you're gonna get a foam or not. So if you do that, just be advised, you probably have to work with the ratios a bit more. Before the cream sits out too long, remember, you must whip it. Whip it real good. Figure eight motion on a whisk is pretty easy. <laughs> I kind of felt bad. James Hoffman said, you gotta whip it forever. It's like, really? I don't find that I have to. <laughs> I just wanna get everything mixed together. Um, it's possible that your technique matters here, but just keep working it in a figure eight like this and get everything incorporated first. Um, I could use my ISI whipper here, but that might be a little overkill and I'm actually saving that for something else that comes later in the episode. So here we go. It's starting to change color, starting to lighten up. Uh, one of the things that has to happen here is we need that sugar to fully dissolve, right? 
What is up with this thing? It's really bothering my arm. James Hoffman said you gotta whip it forever. Really? Whew, that's tough. I'm having a hard time with it today. That's a little bit runny, but I think that's fine. I think that, I mean, we could keep whipping this and thickening it forever, you know, but that should be fine. And now, the rest of this is gonna be built in the glass. I'm gonna need some cracked ice. Uh, so over this cracked ice, I'm going to add two ounces or 60 milliliters of my horchata, which is right here. It does settle a little bit, so I like to shake it up a bit. Uh, ooh, hello. And now I wanna add an ounce or 30 milliliters of rum. I like pretty something fairly unfunky for this. Actually, I think a Bacardi Blanc or Gold would be fine here. If you have a good Demerara, use that. I, I, I like a Plantation Three Star here. I think it's gonna be great. So let's just stir this up, get everything combined and chilled. A little bit of uh, dilution in there. And now all there is left to do is to spoon our whipped uh, Dalgana kind of coffee topper onto this. Uh, so here we go. Okay, and here we are, uh, horchata delgada coffee. <laughs> it's ridiculously thick, but delicious. Oh my God. Oh, oh wow, that's good. This is thick enough. It's like a, it's, it's like a difficult skin across the top of the cock cocktail to actually uh, get through. In fact, in practice, you might even want to mix it in a bit. And I think that's what I'm going to do right now. It is delicious. It is a sweet, um, spicy, cinnamony cocktail with, with a hazelnut note uh, cocktail, highly caffeinated. <laughs> um, I would say even extremely caffeinated because like the amount of um, instant coffee that went into that was rather, it's, it's enough for a pot, right? Or for quite a bit. And it's, it's delicious. I mean, let's just try again after, now that I've mixed it together. It's sweet all the way through. It really just turns into this very delicious kind of Dalgona, somewhat Mexican Caribbean version of white Russian, maybe, but not quite, but it's in like that white Russian space. It's a creamy coffee, desserty cocktail. Um, it's not super proofy, but there's enough alcohol in here that you'd want to be careful with these. It's just good. I really like the kind of nutty hazelnut cinnamon horchata notes in there. They're super great. The horchata is awesome in that. Mm. Really good. That's fantastic. That's really fantastic. Very happy with this. Extremely happy. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that I had been working on this other thing, this fresh roast version of Delgana coffee that doesn't use instant coffee. And I'm gonna present my work so far on that right here because I think it's a very neat idea. And maybe somebody else out there is gonna have better ideas on what to do with this than I do. Or maybe you just want to enjoy it as it is, because I actually find it to be super enjoyable, although not quite as visually appealing as um, as your standard Dalgana coffee. It's a bit of an ugly drink, but delicious. I'm gonna need um, an icy whipper for this and some dark roast coffee. I think that the answer here is that the darker and oilier the roast is, the better. Um, think like something like an espresso roast but I can't claim that my experiments have been truly exhaustive. I'm gonna do like actually a pretty coarse grind on this of about 12 grams of my coffee I'm using the Revelator Coffee Company House Blend, nine to five, which is pretty dark. That is a lot more than 12 grams. Just kind of came flying out of there. 12 on the money. Okay, uh, that's 12 grams of coffee. Set my grinder to fairly coarse actually. I'd even say like even very coarse. And I'll get to why in a minute. Toss it in. So we've got our very coarse coffee here and the icy whipper. And I'm going to add that to my whipper. Uh, now I wanna add about 40 grams of white sugar. Now I wanna add 40 grams of water, so tear. Kind of shake it up, put the cap on. Uh, and so let's add our first charger and shake it. Uh, now I'm gonna add a second charger, which is technically against the rules, but Dave Arnold does it all the time and so do I, and I think it's fine. Okay, now we've got like a lot of pressure in here. 
shake it. Now, initially I thought I needed this to be as fine as possible, partially because this is gonna clog the valve typically and we won't be able to dispense this as a foam the way that I really wanted to, uh, or at least not reliably anyway. And I thought that a super, super fine grind would pass right through the valve, okay? So I went out and I bought a Turkish grinder to test that theory, actually I ordered it online, and I found that, you know, it still clogs. And for some reason actually, you get less quality foam too. So I think skip that. I think the best result is probably gonna come from a pretty coarse grind. Um, at least that's what we're testing today. And, and I'm hoping that the gasket will hold that at bay and prevent itself from clogging the works if it's pretty coarse. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is kind of a combination of rapid infusion as described by Dave Arnold in Liquid Intelligence. And we're trying to make a foam the way that like a whipped cream works, though not this won't be nearly as foamy or as stable. So now that that's all charged up and ready to go, I'm gonna set that aside and prepare our glass with some cracked ice and milk, leaving room for our coffee foam. Crack some ice into our glass or however you get your ice. Pour some milk over that, which I have right here. I'm leaving about that much space for our foam. And now, if I'm lucky, I'm going to be able to dispense this onto the top of the drink. And I've gotta be very careful here because there's three chargers in there and a lot of pressure. So if we really open this up and it isn't clogged, it's gonna blast the drink right out of the glass, right? Perfect. That actually worked really well. And there you have whole bean Dalgana coffee. And I really couldn't be more happy with this actually. If your whipper becomes hopelessly clogged, what you need to do is rapidly vent the whole thing and then pour out from the open bottle. And that'll work fine too, by the way, if you're unable to get it to dispense like that. It's really neat because it's like actually actively bubbling. I think that's really cool. So this is the result, a kind of version of Dalgana coffee, but also maybe it's nitrous pressed espresso cold brew. Um, here's what I'll tell you about it. It's a bit gritty, but if you've ever enjoyed Turkish coffee, that probably doesn't bother you. It certainly doesn't bother me. Um, let's go, uh, uh, the one thing about this is that while Dalgana coffee seems to have a lot of caffeine in it, this certainly, and at least anecdotally, feels like it has an absolutely insane amount of caffeine in it. Um, so be careful there. A glass of this almost always gives me the jitters. Um, anyway, uh, I know it's not super attractive, uh, and it is kind of just nuts, but I just wanted to see if I could make Dalgana coffee with fresh coffee instead of instant, and this is what I came up with. Uh, if anyone can build on it and do something cool with it, I would love to hear about it. Um, it's really cool because it's like bubbly. You can like hear it hissing, the nitrous is escaping. It also like precipitates out of the glass a bit. Anyway, here's the taste. I love it actually. <laughs> I think it's really wonderful. Yes, it's a little gritty. <clears throat> and sometimes it gets stuck in your throat, which isn't the most fun. It is a delicious, um, sweetened, milky coffee treat. Um, I, like I said earlier, kind of similar to Thai coffee um, or Thai iced coffee, but man, it's like super punchy with the espresso. Um, I went with a super coarse grind here. I think I would go somewhere down the middle on that. It's just, it's it's so hard to get it to come out of the machine. I understand, it's, it's, it's tough. I don't know, you need to, we need to invent a machine just for making this stuff. Mm. It's sweet coffee creamy, like very strong caffeine, like espresso powered. I think the transducer complements the stereoelectric pickle and if ever there was a piece of gear that is... Um, like, like espresso times 10 or something. I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> and it's a little chewy. There's, there's, there's grinds in there. So, you know, it's a little different. A little different, something different. Uh, something, you know, something different. Coffee that you've got to eat, you know, it's a little bit like tiramisu. Today on How to Drink, I made a boozy version of Dalgana coffee and an ugly, hyper-caffeinated, though non-alcoholic version of the same stuff. My Instagram is How to Drink. My Twitter is How to Drink. Both have numbers in the middle. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink, but I'm doing a lot of live stuff over at my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. And I really hope you're gonna swing by and hang out with me. It's usually very interactive. We're making stuff in the bar. I, sometimes I'm at my computer doing graphic design work for the show. I would play D&D at 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And uh, I hope you will join in. If you wanna get caught back up though on where we're at or, or really on anything I've done this live or on Twitch, you can check out H2D2, my second channel. There's gonna be a link right down there, up here in the corner, or it'll be at the end screen. We're gonna put links all over this, this son of gun. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you will do the things that YouTubers ask you to do, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. If you wanna use any of the tools I use in the show, there's a link down there in the pinned comment to where you can pick them up. So uh, I think that after these two coffee drinks, I'm about flagged.
I, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stand here now and vibrate my way into another dimension. Ooh, horchata. Ooh, I wonder how this is. A little horchata on my dregs of my Dalgana. Dalgana horchata. Deep for my bunghole. Ooh, I am the great Cornholio. Ah, deep for my bunghole. <laughs>